Welcome to the Nuclear Snail channel, where I'm snailing through the wastelands with my little backpack, like a friendly snail. Yes, this time it's not a military, paramilitary, mercenary, fighter, warrior, ninja, killer, hunter, whatever outfit. This time it's a sort of a more civilian, trader, scavenger-ish kind of a outfit. And as usual in this kind of videos, I'm gonna talk about it, I'm gonna talk about the design principles behind this, uh, what troubles I ran into, what solutions I found, and so on and so forth. So, this right here was a commission for a client, uh, so they are going to LARP and they're gonna be playing a sort of a trader, scavenger kind of character. This honestly turned out more like a trader and overall civilian than a scavenger in itself. Um, but it wasn't supposed to be like, you know, not, not like those I'm gonna open up a bunker with heavy gear and like rope everything out and here is like my huge welding torch to cut through steel kind of scavenger. More like, you know, pick up things here and there. So, um, the one thing I did and that I've talked about uh, in the past is mixing civilian and military gear. Just uh, usually I do it uh, sort of the other way around, although not really necessarily. Um, if you look at my works, a lot of times it's actually not that much military gear in there, but it kind of goes into the warrior direction because that's the kind of an outfit I do most of the times and because usually the civilian stuff is also more on the more aggressive looking side of things, right? In this one, what I took as the base for this was this old school um, leather jacket. I got this from my stepfather. He used to wear it, um, well, just, you know, in his, back in his days when he used to wear it. And uh, yeah, this used to be a full jacket. And I uh, removed the sleeves as the first order of business because the sleeves were going for me like up until here. And if I moved my arms, it would be just terrible and restricting. And right now it is very, very um, free moving. It's, it almost doesn't restrict me at all. I can do all, all kinds of things. It's really nice. Um, so yeah, this was the first thing I did. Other than that, uh, I didn't have to adjust the size of the jacket at all. Um, the client for whom it is is a bit wider around the waist than me, but not terribly. Uh, so it sits well on me, it will sit well on him. It's cool. So, uh, one thing I did, however, was, uh, let me show you here, on both sides, after cutting off the sleeves, I've introduced, and the, th this belt goes all around, it, it just goes all around the armhole. Same story on this side. Goes all around, just to give it uh, another color, and uh, also to give it a border. Uh, so we're talking termination. I've talked about termination in one of my theory videos in the past. How does a thing end? In this case, this jacket ends with this nice border it just emphasizes that you know that that is a thing that is intentional design and yes we also have some um some uh, fabric here some torn fabric hanging over over that so this uh really emphasizes that yes it has been torn out but it has been torn out on purpose and someone took care of it so it's it is a jacket that has been modified in the fantasy world you know uh and it has been in the real world as well. Interesting thing about this, uh, here I did the thing I usually do, which is using bolts, right? So uh, this is bolted and also did some stitching here uh, with a uh, shoe sewing machine. Uh, I might make a video about that sometime. I didn't use it that much yet, but on this side, I only did sewing and stitching. It's not very accurate. It looks actually hideous. If any of you is a seamstress, you will find it to be rather funny, but it does hold. And it was a great piece for me to exercise it on because, you know, why not? Uh, for smallest detail like this, I can say, yeah, it's post-apocalyptic because, you know, what am I stitching this on? It's not a perfect kind of a seam uh, or not a seam you would expect to, to be perfect on something like this. 
uh, a scavenger or a trader or someone who made this jacket for them in the fantasy world would have, you know, just torn off the sleeves and, you know, stitched um, up the border in some haphazard but uh, firm way, S -s -s uh, just as I did here. Um, now, uh, staying up here on the shoulders, you will notice those straps, they're pretty thin. That was um, an important design decision here, not just visually, because a lot of times I, I will go with like super thick straps. You will see it in my every second work I do. It's like some thick, heavy backpack straps that almost look like you, you're wearing a vest or something. Uh, not here. I left them thin on purpose uh, just to give this whole backpack uh, a bit more of a casual air, so just as the base structure of this jacket. Uh, now, yes, some details about it and the stuff added on top, again, say, wasteland and survival and improvisation and blah, but the general air of this is casual, retro kind of a look, so I went with this here, to, so that was one of the reasons for not super thick straps. Another reason was that, for mobility's sake, I don't want a super thick strap here. And I wanted to keep this backpack completely separate. It's not bolted anywhere, there isn't even a possibility to clip it into the jacket or something. There is no need for that. This is a more casual kind of an outfit, so... And even if it wasn't, I mean, this holds just fine. So I can take it off completely. Here's the back, by the way, not a lot going on there because most of the time it's going to be covered by uh, the backpack and with, uh, as with most works, there is a certain budget that goes into it and it's better to spend it on, you know, stuff that is going to be seen most of the time. Which is, by the way, the reason someone asked me a long time ago, do I distress the insides uh, of the connectors? Like, if I have a bolt here, on the outside, you can see I made it a bit dirty. Do I uh, make it dirty on the inside? Uh, no. As you can see here, like how, how often is this going to be this way? And even if it is, like does it ruin the immersion completely? I don't think so, but 99.9% .9 of the time it's going to look like this. No one is going to see the inside of those. Um, a bit different story here. On the backpack, I actually did do both sides of these connectors. Um, just spray them black and also this part where where it connects here uh, because uh, the, uh, the player is gonna be taking off the backpack quite a couple of times during the LARP so I figured that to be important like that is gonna be seen a couple of times so why not after all it's just a couple of quick sprays but all of those bolts and stuff that hold all of this stuff on the inside like spraying them like no I rather spend the time and thus the clients budget to add some other detail that are actually gonna be visible so quick detour to that uh, let's get back to this well we were talking about the backpack this was an old uh, briefcase just held like this opens up here And inside, and there is room for some, uh, I don't know, student books, I guess. It looks like something an old school student from the 70s would wear. I don't know if, it, uh, if I also have it from my stepfather or not. I have it from somewhere. I don't remember where I get all my stuff from. And now I'm hanging on this thread here. Okay, now I untangled myself, had uh, caught myself with this on one of the wrenches. Uh, so. This is what it looks like. I uh, barely did any modification to it except uh, distressing effects. This uh, stencil, uh, 7 is one of the lucky numbers. And um, here we have some stamps to just fill out that space somehow so it's not completely blank. Uh, it is not completely blank but at the same time it works great with this focus area here and uh, a rest area, because if you look at the loaded front here and then you have this sort of a back, I don't think it ne necessarily needs a buttload of detail. Again, there could be, but doesn't need to. So, putting it back on, uh, in terms of uh, how it sits, yeah, it doesn't have a tactical fit. Uh, it also kind of sits in a way that's... Um, I would say, yeah, um, looks kind of casual, 
I think I mentioned that already. It looks, um, it could be a bit higher up, or, or it could be furthermore down. Um, this can a bit be adjusted with these uh, clasps here, because those are, you know, the usual, can be opened and then uh, it can slide up and down on the clasp. The belt can slide up and down on the clasp and uh, yeah. Um, I've adjusted, uh, sorry, attached the whole shebang here with two bolts, right? Because that prevents rotation, because if that's gonna be a single attachment point in the middle, it's gonna naturally want to rotate. And actually the rotation on the bolt itself, which could cause opening, despite uh, me using special glue to prevent that on top of the bolt, it would actually be uh, feathered out by just swinging you know, on the belt, by the belt taking the rotation. But I want it to be extra sure, that's why I did two bolts, so this is not rotating. And on the bottom here, it's just one, but then again, any movement is gonna go rather into the this whole part, the belt, the how the buckle sits on the D-ring, all that. There's not gonna be a lot of rotation happening here. All right, uh, let me put this back on and let's move on to some other features of this. So, um, up here we have a lamp. This can actually be opened. Here is a latch which opens up. And uh, I don't know if this still works. It might actually still work. It doesn't have a lamp in it nor a battery, but hey, might be interesting to find out if this still works. So this lamp on the back here has uh, like a metal thingy. I don't know what it's called. A metal loop kind of thing, it's, which is firmly attached to the main, um, well, to the, to, to the main lamp, <laughs> to the main what it's called shell of the lamp. And that sits on a belt which is bolted to the jacket's uh, part here. So it's just a belt, two bolts on each side. It slides a bit on the belt, but it, it sits actually really firmly because that belt is pretty thick. So it doesn't really shift around a lot. I can adjust it a bit, but doesn't shift around a lot. On the other side we have, uh, this, is, uh, this here is CNC engraved name of the character on an aluminum piece like this and some more lucky numbers. These are just uh, punched. I have a video named uh, using letter punches, so doing this effect is really easy with letters and numbers, especially in aluminum. So uh, this just uh, looks really cool, I think. Here I'm using a lot of the surface and going with the existing geometry of the jacket. Uh, rather than doing just a straight piece. That would also have looked cool, but I decided to cover more surface and to just take this whole thing and integrate it into the jacket. This way it just feels like the whole thing is more cohesive, like this plate was specifically made for this jacket, which is the case. Moving on. On this side, um, these are, or used to be, uh, belt locks for uh, the German army uh, military belts. Not the current generation, but the one before it, like in the 80s and stuff, as far as I know anyway. Um, I don't think they use them anymore. I might be wrong, I don't think so. Anyway, I have, I've used a bunch of those belts over the years for all kinds of things. For example, I think at least a part of this belt, no, it's, it's not that one, but uh, I use them a lot but not the buckles, because I uh, always found some cooler buckles. So over the years I've accu accumulated a lot of those buckles and now I've decided to use them as uh, quote-unquote armor, uh, which looks pretty cool. It looks like that m medieval um, armor design, I think the brigandine. And uh, I think this works really well design-wise. Uh, little heart here actually I think should go up here but hey it's the wastelands people don't know that much anymore about where the heart is so <laughs> good enough um, 
So yeah, I've just arranged four of those on top of this jacket. Like, yes, it's a civilian jacket, but in the wastelands you would want to protect yourself at least a bit. And this is actually a pretty unobtrusive design in terms of mobility and everything else. It doesn't weigh a lot, it just flexes with the jacket most of the time. Uh, so I think it really adds some interesting uh, detail here. It is also very interesting in terms of shape language. We have a square of squares here. So the whole thing is a square, right? And those are small squares. But here we have a triangular shape, which is emphasized by those two big elements flowing into this one, flowing down to the buckle. So we have a Y kind of shape here, which is based on a triangle, right? Uh, we have the general triangle of the anatomy, like the shoulders, going to the slimmer waist, not as emphasized here as in some other of my works, but nonetheless. Uh, the whole jacket design, you know, the usual, your typical leather jacket design, has kind of a, a lot of V shapes and triangular shapes to it. And this is a square shape right here. We have a repetition of the square shape in this whole arrangement here. Like all of those kind of build a square, while each individual one of those obviously builds a line, but all of those kind of build a square. To contrast that, we have a circle here and a circle here. But then again, we have some rectangles here. That's a rectangle. And so is this small part. So you see, I have uh, varying geometric shapes here, which are echoed somewhere else in the design. So we have square, rectangle, and triangle going on. Uh, that, like if you're designing something from scratch, like a concept art, that might be a bit too much at once. It is kind of hard to balance, but I did it for this one, and I think it turned out cool. Uh, so let's talk about this. No, you cannot remove those to actually use those. I tried but that would would have been uh, not a very secure hold, so there would be a risk of losing them accidentally, which doesn't really work right now. Like, you can't take them out without destroying something. You can't take them out even on purpose right now. So those uh, are supposed to be in the story, like some sort of improvised splint armor or something like that. Uh, so um, let's say on the LARP there is an axe blow like this, might get blocked, you know, I don't know the exact LARP rules, but I think this looks cool uh, because, um, well, people historically have also used stuff like bones and stuff and sticks and so on and so forth um, in prehistoric times to uh, do some sort of an armor. Um, so this is not that unreasonable. Obviously, it's not as good as uh, this in terms of coverage because there are gaps in between and uh, this is uh, not as good as full plate armor, of course, but this is still something. Like, it's not nothing. And uh, those wrenches are pretty thick, so um, yeah. They're also on this um, pot holder Yes, I'm still using pot holders because they just look like awesome padding and, and they are, it's, it's all nice and padded and uh, yeah, doesn't hinder the movement at all. It just sits here and uh, looks cool. So on the one hand, it evokes a mechanic, uh, obviously because those are wrenches. Um, I find it a bit pity that they can't be taken out easily to use, yes. Uh, but my priority here was to make something that will not fall apart and, uh, you know, the costume starts losing parts as, as soon as you start moving. I didn't find any sustainable way to solve this. I could have if this would have been a f the absolute focus of this, but the absolute focus of this was to make an overall good costume and not to solve this specific part in a way that you can take them out and also put them in very securely while also showing a lot of them because showing a lot of the surface is uh, important. It's shiny, it's chrome, it contrasts everything else. Uh, speaking about shiny and chrome, you will notice there isn't a lot of like rust and stuff. Like, yes, there is distressed effects. The whole thing looks used. If you look at the leather, there is some dust effects and paint effects and all that. It does look distressed, it does look used. But it's not like completely drowned in rust. You don't have to. 
I've spoken about this in one of my older videos, how much dirt is the right amount, or more dirt, or maybe not, I don't know the title of it. Basically just watch the entire channel, right? Uh, but I, I've spoken about this in the past. So I think this looks really cool. That said, if you look up close, you see that there is still some amount of dirt here. Keep that in mind, especially for all of you newbies. You need some amount of dirt. It doesn't have to be drowned in rust, but if, it's look, if it looks completely new, then you're also kind of off. And while the wrenches don't have a lot of dirt, this padding piece definitely does. Okay, so it's not drowning dirt, but it's still dirt. Um, if you want to know how to make all, the, all of those effects, uh, there are videos about this on my channel as well. It's basically mostly fabric paint and other kinds of paint. Anyway, moving on, let's move on to this thing. So this is a scale. <laughs> Let me tilt the camera here. It's a scale with measure tape in centimeters and inches. Awesome, right? And this, uh, this actually still works. So if I pull on this, <laughs> you can see how many kilos or LBS it shows. And this serves multiple purposes. For one, since this is a trader character, well, maybe they want to weigh something, in which case this can be unclipped, right? And then here it just goes into one of those holes on the belt, like this. And yeah, it, it's designed for luggage, for airport luggage. There is also some uh, instructions here on the back. I, I unfortunately drowned them in dirt too much, so they're barely readable. But it says something like, note, uh, baggage, something, something, blah, blah, and also check with your airline and <laughs> whatnot. It's an old, old school scale. I mean, I, I love the font here. It, it's so cute. I, I'm so happy that I found a perfect character to use this as a costume element because this is so cute. I, I love this thing. And I'm uh, so happy to be giving it to someone who is probably going to make use of it. Uh, if not by actually using it to weigh stuff, then at least by wearing it. So um, it serves multiple functions. For one, it kind of locks the two halves of this vest together. Because you see right now they're kind of moving. They will still be able, able to move, but now their movement is a bit linked. It's still possible, but they're still held together by this. So these are just clasps which hold the scale in place. And here it just goes into the belt. I'll get to the belt in a sec. On my client, it is not gonna look like this, like apart, at least not as much, because um, the client has a bit more waist than me, and this is uh, already on the narrowest setting, and this is still too wide for me. So I don't have a lot of grip here on my, uh, on my waist and on my hips from the belt. But again, this will be better on the person for whom it is actually designed. And that's the important part. I'll get to the, to the belt later. Anyway, this just clips in here, uh, or not clips, it, it, the hook just goes into one of those. Um, I've bent it as far backwards as possible uh, in order for me to still be able to get it in and out and to be able to still hang something in here. But it's not as wide as it used to be uh, for more comfort uh, when wearing it like this and to for less chance of catching stuff in it randomly. Uh, it can, of course, be left like this, but I don't like a loose hook and it's a great support for the belt as well. So I just hook it in like this. And uh, what it does, as I've said already, it also takes the lines of those two elements up here and converges them, or is at the conversion point of them. And uh, it just adds this large circle into the design. And of course, it's one of the look at me elements right here. It contrasts the square of squares here because it's round and um, it's just, you know, it just adds so much interest. I love this thing. So let's move on to the belt, as I promised. It's very smart of me to have tilted the camera upwards now <laughs> since we're going to be looking more downwards towards the belt. So here we have two of those clasps holding it together. 
uh, we have a leather belt going through one of those military belts. Yes, some military equipment uh, was used here to contrast the civilian look, but since the base is so, so casual and civilian, the whole thing just balances itself out. It still finds itself on like, I'd say 70% civilian look. Um, some uh, bag with velcro here and with some minor detail. This is a piece of metal here, piece of steel bolted on top of it, uh, really flat and I've painted it red to give it some uh, color interest. I love red highlights as many of you know and also painted some uh, 762 stencil right here which I found in my stencil crate. Uh, just a random thing. So uh, yeah, there could be stuff in here to trade and whatnot. Uh, a small key bag right here with the zipper which doesn't work that great anymore. It's kind of uh, tense but looks cool with a 13 stencil on it. Again just to add some visual interest you'll see a lot of fat stencils in the belt area. It's just to make things pop more. So there is a lot a lot of big elements, big bright elements up here. I wanted to contrast it in the hip area by using those stencils. Uh, and of course the double buckle here also serves that purpose. Uh, on the other side a small bag with a velcro lock and a large bag with a Germany flag and also a piglet. And under the piglet is uh, uh, this big uh, circular stencil and uh, it's just again, you know, echo, echo. If you just look at this, you find there is a circle here, circle here, no circle here, but it's still white and large. You know, so there is just like some echoing elements either in color or in size and or in shape throughout this whole thing. And on the back, we don't really have anything except uh, here. I have made a video named how to shorten your belts or how to extend your belts and I've done this here by introducing this elastic uh, portion for the belt because uh, you know it just makes it more comfortable. You sit down or something and it goes with you. Uh, you gain a couple of kilos and you don't need to adjust this. These can obviously still be adjusted to... Uh, this is the closest right now but it can become wider by adjusting those buckles. But you don't even need to do that because the elastic will do a couple of centimeters or even inches. Well, inches I don't know, but a couple of centimeters for sure. Uh, anyway, uh, that's the belt. Not a lot of surface detail to it, just some stamps as you will see here. Those black stamps just to add <clears throat> some top level detail, some finest detail to it. Uh, this pocket still works, by the way. One of the few cases where one of the pockets on the original jacket wasn't like bolted shut or cut out or something like that, which is something that I do a lot. Okay, um, I could talk about this for a long time, but uh, really, um, I think the main thing here for me it was uh, really interesting to make something that is, for a change, more um, more civilian and more trader-like and more just, you know, general adventurer-like and less um, military mercenary kind of wastelander, you know? And I think this looks cool. I, I loved making it. It is definitely, uh, as I've said, one of the more interesting things I've made in the recent time. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think about it and how you like it. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, this is a work for a client, so I do custom commissions. So hit me up on Facebook or if you don't have Facebook, Instagram, and let's see what we can make for you. I really enjoy making costumes for uh, people that love having high quality custom costumes. Also join the Nuclear Snail community group. Link is in the Facebook description. You can show your works. Uh, you can look at other people's uh, works. You can write. I post a lot of updates in there. Uh, if you are a regular, please consider supporting me on Patreon. It really helps the channel. It helps me making those videos for you. 
and for everyone else in the whole worldwide costuming wasteland scene. Anyway, I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.